Hey, good morning. It's Patricia Murphy. It's Tuesday. This is Seattle Now. If you've filled your gas tank lately, I'm guessing you drove around looking for the best price. Maybe you even decided to skip driving altogether. Gas around Seattle is getting expensive. And it's not just here. We'll talk to Bloomberg's Jennifer DeLowey about why. But first, let's get you caught up. A Seattle man is facing 20 years in prison on federal terrorism charges. 21-year-old Elvin Hunter Bjorn Williams was arrested at SeaTac Airport last May while trying to board a flight to Cairo after a local mosque alerted authorities to him. A plea agreement says Williams wanted to join ISIS and carry out an attack here or overseas. Williams pleaded guilty yesterday to providing material support to a designated foreign terrorist organization. He'll be sentenced in June. Meanwhile, King County will resume looking into deaths caused by law enforcement today for the first time in four years. The first hearing involves the 2017 fatal shooting of Demarius Butts. Butts was 19 when he was shot by Seattle police. A Washington Supreme Court ruling allows jurors to consider whether officers followed department policy and training when they used deadly force. And organizers say this year's annual free health clinic at Seattle Center that serves more than 3,000 people is being canceled. The massive effort has provided medical, dental, and vision care to people who can't afford it since 2014. But Crosscut reports organizers were told by Climate Pledge Arena and its management, the Oakview Group, that the space was already scheduled for a concert. Seattle King County Clinic said on its website that so far, a vision clinic set for October is still on, and the arena says it's committed to holding the event in the future. There are a lot of small price increases picking away at your budget right now, and one of the most heart-clutching is gas. A gallon of regular is hovering around $5 in Seattle. Diesel is more than $5.50. Yep, Weeks of war in Ukraine, sanctions against Russia, and risks to tankers entering a war zone are partly to blame, but there is more to it than that. Jennifer Delohi is here to shed some light on this. She's an energy and environmental policy reporter for Bloomberg. Jennifer, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Happy to be here. So the last time I had to fill up my tank, it cost $60, and that was more than a week ago. Statewide in Washington, AAA says we're seeing an average price of about four seventy, and like we mentioned in the lead there, $5 here in the Seattle Bellevue area. What is going on here in Washington? Well, uh, what's happening in Washington is directly tied to what's happening around the globe. I mean, the reality is, you know, we're part of a very big oil market, and although Russian oil and refined petroleum products only make up about 8% of U.S. imports. Volatility around the world is a problem for us here at home. And and right now, we're in a situation where we have less oil really than we need. That's a global problem. So what we're seeing in terms of high gasoline prices in Washington state all the way to Washington, D.C. is a direct product really of tight oil supplies globally. And I should say, by the way, that, you know, what you're experiencing on the West Coast is more aggravated, frankly, than some other states. The West Coast tends to be a place where you see higher gasoline costs in large part because there are fewer refineries and uh, less of the infrastructure for storing gasoline and getting it to retailers. So that always compounds the problem on the West Coast. And then high gas taxes are another factor that increase prices at the pump. I'm glad you brought up where our supply comes from uh, as a bit of an issue. Tell me a little bit more about this. How does it impact our prices here on the West Coast? Well, so... Again, the reality really is Russia is the world's number three uh, producer of crude. And to the extent that countries and companies right now are shunning Russian crude, that increases demand on all the other oil that's coming from the U.S., that's coming from Saudi Arabia, that's coming from Canada. In some ways, it's, it's just basic economics, more demand and less supply means higher prices. And the reality is we were actually in this situation before Russia started moving tanks into Ukraine. At the end of last year, we were dealing with gas gasoline prices that were starting to increase, again, because this oil market is so tight. So to think about what's happening, we have to look back at where we were even two years ago at the start of the pandemic. And at that point, you know, lockdowns were suddenly causing fuel demand to crash. 
oil producers around the world rapidly slashed production. They tried to, to survive, essentially, as fuel demand just dropped to these epic lows. And then last year, people started traveling again. They started going back to the office and fuel demand picked up much more quickly than expected. But the end result of all of this is that we just have more demand, really, than we have oil to deal with it. And that was a situation before Russia invaded Ukraine that has only made things worse. Have we ever seen anything like this before? I am a child of the 70s. I saw the original, you know, one of the gas crises in the mid 70s. But I can't think of anything in recent memory. Well, you really have to flash back to the summer of 2008 when years of economic growth and fuel demand outpaced oil production. And and we found ourselves at the head of that really in that summer of 2008 that really spawned in, in the U.S. rallying cries at the Republican National Convention of Drill Baby Drill. That was really the last time we saw really sustained high gasoline prices. A side note on that is while there's huge sticker shock with gasoline prices crossing five and six dollars a gallon now, once you factor inflation into the picture, real prices were actually about 30 percent higher in 2008. And you mentioned the 70s, but you can look back through history at other price spikes tied to conflict in oil producing regions. And, and another big one was in the late 1970s and the early 1980s when the Iranian revolution caused oil production in that region to drop. And then the U.S. embargoed Iranian oil. So gasoline prices at that time hit $2.68. Doesn't sound like much, except that when inflation is factored in, that was about eight bucks uh, in the equivalent today. So we've been here before. We will probably be here again. A lot of people heading back to work. A lot of offices calling people back in. A lot of pe- more people going to be on the road. I wonder how this is all going to come together for them and what this might mean. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that is the big question, right? We don't know. Uh, of course, uh, there's a lot more that we don't know than we do know. Uh, but we do know that uh, fuel demand is expected to pick up as folks go back to the office uh, in ever larger numbers. You know, the stops and starts of the pandemic may still affect us as we go forward, but fuel demand overall is expected to go up. We don't know how long uh, the war in Ukraine will last and what that conflict will bring. But we do know we're going to be in a period of sustained tightness in this market for some time. You know, even if oil prices are expected next year, we're expecting, you know, we're seeing analysts call for higher gasoline prices over the next few months. Fuel market analysts still expect retail prices to reach about $4.50 a gallon. And that's, of course, nationwide. So it'll be higher in Seattle and in the Washington area. But it won't endure forever. And so, you know, we have to get through the next many months But traders and analysts don't expect high oil prices to be lasting a year out from now. Jennifer, you're in D.C. What are you seeing at the pump? (laughs) Well, I try to uh, avoid uh, filling up my car as much as possible. It's well over $4 here. Uh, You guys have it far, far worse. I might be canceling my van trip for the summer. I'm not sure I want to hit the road. I'm with you. There are a lot of folks questioning their travel plans uh, this summer. Yeah. And one last thing before I let you go, because... I wonder about the market for electric vehicles in all this. Nothing hurts more than paying at the gas pump. You know, nothing drives home the point that maybe we are over-reliant on this fuel source than this kind of situation right now. What is this likely to do to the sales of electric vehicles? Yeah, there are a lot of people talking about this. It's a great question. In the the past, periods of high gasoline prices drove short-term upticks in EV purchases, certainly an interest in buying them. And we're seeing some indication that that is happening now. For instance, there's some online search data that shows, you know, people are researching uh, EVs a little bit more. Again, the question really gets down to, you know, how long does the interest last? There's some cross currents here, but, you know, one factor that is different now than previous times, including in 2000, is that not only is there some growing consumer interest, there's also more availability of EVs. Automakers are clearly embracing them. There's more options on the drawing board and and on the assembly line. So that increases availability and that can stoke interest. One caution, however, is that, you know, obviously inflation is affecting everybody. And uh, while EVs have a lower cost of ownership or can potentially have a lower cost to fuel them and to maintain them, you know, there's a big upfront cost. And that higher sticker price may dissuade some motorists who, you know, they're seeing their paychecks not go as far right now. And that can be a real disincentive, too. Yeah, like we said at the top, lots of things picking away at your budget right now. Jennifer Delohey, really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Jennifer Delohey is an energy and environmental reporter for Bloomberg. 
Thanks for listening to Seattle Now. Jenny Cecil Moore and Jason Pagano produced today's show. Matt Jorgensen does our theme music. I'm Patricia Murphy. See you tomorrow. Thank you.